Well, it's been a good long while since uh, I've shot any video of the electric BCS, but we've got it pretty much torn down right now, so I thought I would add some video of uh, being able to look at some of the systems a little bit more torn down. The reason for the teardown is leaky axle seals here, uh, input shaft seal there, since we've got it this far apart, and uh, motivated to do this partly by the desire to switch from the 10 inch wheels to the 12 inch wheels in order to also add wheel weights that I got a good deal on and uh, kind of beef the whole thing up a little bit. It'll give it more traction, more pulling power, an inch more ground clearance. Why not anyway? So yeah, this is what the BCS transmission looks like uh, when it's torn down. You basically have a whole tractor collapsed into a, I don't know, 35 centimeters long. The space in here is a bell housing for the clutch. And then here is uh, the final drive worm and the differential sits in here. And then you've got two kind of stub axle assemblies. The diff locker is on this side. And uh, then you have a probably a reduction in the final drive to the PTO output plus the three speed sliding gear transmission up top. So pretty darn slick to uh, fit all that into that space. So in our case, the battery cradle came off. Michelle has been modifying it because we got to bring this back panel forward in order to uh, add an inch of clearance for the larger wheels because we don't want to change anything else really. We want to keep the motor and the batteries as as close to the machine as possible, but we need to add a bit of clearance and uh, so we're we're cutting out the back of the battery cradles and shifting it forward, but it's as yet unfinished. And I've been starting to pull apart. These are the, the kind of stub axle assemblies. This is the, doo -doo -doo, this one's the left-hand side that has a, it has an extra sliding gear as part of the diff locking mechanism. And then this is the, so that one is still waiting to be pulled apart. There are two bearings, a circlip, and the oil seal that I want to replace is right in there. Uh, like here's the one that I've already pulled and uh, it presses in from the back into the shoulder, followed by a bearing and then the shaft and a spacer and another bearing. And there's a circlip in there somewhere, but this is the one that was leaking. We're going to do them both since it's a bit of a hassle to get in here and uh, it's an opportunity to do the do the oil change as well so that's going smoothly except that I got the wrong size of uh, replacement seals by trusting someone over the phone who said yeah your BCS you'll need this turns out you must have been thinking of some other BCS so drive end since we've got it off might as well pull the motor apart and give it an inspection so this is the drive motor that we used for the electric conversion. Just trying to flip it to see the nameplate. That is upside down. So this is an AMD uh, CPEX motor on the, what are these, the 6.7 inch diameter uh, case. So it's this big steel case used by Prestolite and then AMD and then D&D. And they built a whole lot of motors that all fit into this case and use the same kind of uh, cast ends, uh, drive end and the non-drive end. And then you can put different brush holders, uh, different field windings, different armatures in. But in this case, we've got one that was wound for, it says it's wound for 36 or 48 volts. I'm running it slow at 24, which suits me fine. Um, but it would be happy at, at the higher voltages too. And it's a separately excited motor, so you can see that the field windings are, are relatively delicate, more numerous turns as compared to a, uh, as compared to if it were a, a series or a shunt wound. And that the, the studs for the field windings are small. These are, I don't know, quarter inch UNC, whereas the brush connections, the brushes are beefy, the commutator's big, 
the laminations on the armature are big. The armature sees full current and the brushes see full current, but the field winding sees smaller current and it's managed by the, uh, by the controller. So these are the, the kind of end of the evolution of brushed DC motors and they give you a lot of the uh, same performance characteristics as an AC motor with the possibility to do plug braking and regen and all sorts of cool stuff and they're really smooth but you still have brushes that wear out eventually. Anyway, this one is pretty much spotless. Brushes are massive, everything looks clean. Uh, everything just looks fantastic. I got this motor secondhand. It looked like this. It's now been in service for three years. No visible wear anywhere. I, the, bear, the bearings still feel perfect. I can't justify changing them. So yeah, then this is the transition plate that I made that bolts to the face of the motor. So it's got the bolt pattern that matches up with the AMD using some shouldered cap screw or cap screws that fit in leaves a flush face and then the Honda BCS mounting plate goes on there like that and then that bolts up onto the BCS with these six bolts here and then the driveline connection is this homemade piece of uh, it's a double bracelet of roller chain and then some parts made from made from like stock shaft couplers and gears and turned together on the lathe and lined up and welded together. And then this spline, I had to borrow a, I had to get a, a donor um, clutch that has the BCS spline for the input. So that goes onto the BCS and then this goes onto the motor and then the two of them get joined together with the bracelet. And uh, it looks like it could have used like a drop of oil every year and a half but it's also not wearing and I'm not seeing any worrisome wear on these guys so that coupler seems to be a success also so yeah clean bill of health we can uh, get the oil changed get everything uh, sealed back up should be good for uh, good for easy five years of not having to worry about it pretty cool I'm really happy with the uh, durability of this design. Here's the uh, controller on its kind of plate so it sits more or less there above the motor. Motor sits in the middle of the cradle and in fact the, the motor goes back onto the BCS and then the cradle kind of slides on over the motor and there are these bits of uh, rubber kind of gasket that I made that seal around the motor both uh, at the very end and in the middle and that makes the motor suck air in at the front and then it has to blow it back out here and it has to blow it onto the underside of the controller cooling the controller on its aluminum plate and then it's allowed to blow out the top of the enclosure once it's cooled the motor and the controller and uh, I'm sure that's all overkill but uh, hey, I didn't know, so it stays cool, it stays relatively clean. There's a bit of dust in the motor, but you know, three years of working on a farm, there's a bit of dust in everything around here. All right, hope this is fun or entertaining or interesting for someone. I can't wait to get those uh, bigger wheels on and see what it looks like. Thanks for watching.